Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm your host, Glory, and I crochet. Enough of that, I think you already get it just, let's move on. You're clicking on this video because you think you have what it takes because you don't have what it takes to crochet your own stuffed animals. That is okay, I'm here to teach you or hopefully help you guide and aid you into making your own stuffed animals and making your own patterns. Let's talk about the type of person that it takes to crochet because unfortunately, just because you can crochet doesn't mean you're gonna be able to crochet your own patterns as easily. Not that it's impossible, it's never 0%. It's just not, it's not gonna be as easy for other people. For me personally, I know that when I want to envision how I wanna design something, I literally just sit in my chair, look out to the sky, and literally see myself crocheting what I'm trying to crochet as if I'm watching a YouTube video in like the sky. But it's my imagination. That YouTube video doesn't exist. So usually I'll be able to see exactly how I wanna go about crocheting something sped up, and then I'm able to just pick up my hook and go about my day because I know exactly how I wanna do it. But that may not be a normal thing for you. Or it may not even be a normal thing, to be honest. Some of you guys are gonna be able to get exactly how to design it instantly. And others is just gonna take some time because that envisioning aspect just isn't there as easily as it is for other people. And that's okay. But with that out of the way, now we can talk about what you need to start with. So. When you wanna start a crochet plushie, do you think about what you wanna create just in your head and grab a hook, yarn, and go for the best? Do you be, have a real life photo or an image that you found on Pinterest and pick up your yarn and hook and call it a day? Or do you see, draw out the design that you wanna make and then pick up your hook and go about your day? I'm gonna give you time to guess. That's enough time. The correct answer, obviously, was C. You must always have a picture drawn, always. I don't care if you're not an artist drawing wise, it doesn't matter. References are things that you must start with. Now that you're crocheting your own patterns, creating your own instructions, you're an artist now. And every artist needs a reference. Now, before, before you go to the comments, hold your breaks. Real life photos are definitely necessary if the plushie that you're trying to make actually is a living being in real life or is something that you literally see in real life. Like, for example, making a custom order of a family friend's dog. Obviously, you're not gonna really just draw the dog from scratch, although that is very helpful, but you're also going to look at that picture of the dog the real life dog not the drawn dog it's always best to draw out how you want to even make the body even just a little sketch goes a very long way the second step that you need to do is once you have your picture ooh, did y'all see that the sun is coming up i'm so happy taking the photo that you drew not the photo the picture like I said, we're artists now, we have references, paints and paper, not all that, but you know what I mean. And you're gonna take your reference and you're gonna take each section of that plushie, each section being like each part, like arms, legs, body, nose, head, and you're gonna break it down into very simple, digestible, unless you're lactose intolerant, I don't know digestible shapes. You're gonna take those pictures, you're gonna break it down into every easy shape that you know of. Square, circle, rectangle, triangle. Keep it to those five. Those are like the most common shapes that you see in a stuffed animal on a day to day. Well, let's talk about these shapes and how they're commonly made. And then we'll talk more about making the shapes into your own plushies. Gonna move to the side for a bit. Let's talk about a circle. 
if our magic ring starts at the bottom of the circle, you're going to increase in the next round and then you're going to also increase in the round after that. Now, the increases need to be evenly spaced out. That's why when you see a pattern that starts off with a nice round circle-y shape, you see that we start a magic ring with six and then we increase six times and then we increase comma single crochet six times. It's because if you want that nice round shape, the increases must be evenly distributed. The same thing goes for decreases. If decreases are evenly distributed, you will get a nice round shape. If there's a lot of decreases on one side of a round, you're going to get the shape coming in a lot at only that one side. And on the other side, it's going to be just straight because there was no change. If you increase a lot on one part of the round or one side of a round, you're going to get an, a circle that gets extremely bigger on one side but doesn't have any change on the other side. The way that you place your increases and decreases within a round determine how the shape of the plushie looks when you're crocheting it. And I'm gonna show you a real life example. I have my yarn, you'll see exactly what I mean. Don't worry. But let's talk about shapes in terms of your plushie that you're trying to design, right? Okay, so the leaves are just in the way. They're always in the way, huh? So now we have our references. And now we have the shapes, the basic dumbed down shapes of the piece that we want to create. And now we kind of have an understanding of how increases and decreases even work within a pattern, right? Let's talk about where to begin. So with each shape, you're going to take it and you're going to literally pinpoint where the magic ring is going to begin. Now for like, uh, say a tube, for example, you can easily pinpoint that the magic ring is going to be towards the bottom right there. But for other shapes, it may not be as apparent. And that's why we draw the shapes out first so that you're really easily able to tell where you should start your magic ring. Now, do these pinpoints so that you're able to tell, of course, like I said earlier, where the magic ring starts, but more than that, so that you can tell where you're even gonna start. So that when you're crocheting and maybe you're doing color changing, you know exactly when you need to bring out a second color of yarn and you know exactly what to expect, right? Magic ring pinpointing is really essential, especially if you're crocheting a piece that you're not quite sure how to go about crocheting, or if you're even like fairly new to crochet designing, do that for all the pieces. The next step is usually just go on, choose a piece to start and start crocheting. Experiment. It's gonna take you probably all day. I do tend to find that if I start designing a plushie by 10 a.m., I'm probably going to be done around 6 or 7 a.m. p.m. <laughs> I wish. Oh, wait, no, that would be really bad, actually. So it technically takes me about eight hours a day. So keep that in mind when you're designing. But although that is the next, the official next step, I want to talk about a sub step before that step that you might want to keep in mind. As you're crocheting, look at the pieces that you made when you were drawing out the basic shapes and see if some of those basic shapes can be combined to make one big lump sum shape. That's how we create seamless looks within our crochet pieces. Because they both have the same pinpoint, you can crochet them or you can combine them together. They have to have the same pinpoint though. Put that out of the way. Now we can continue on to the next step. Like I said, you got to just bring out your hook, your yarn, choose a part that you want to start with and crochet. If you start with limbs first and then you start with bigger pieces after, it's easy to delve and customize the size. Whereas if you start with bigger pieces first and then smaller pieces, it's harder to make a piece smaller than it already is, right? But it's easier to make it as big as it needs to be. There's only so many stitches that you can take away to make it smaller. When you're starting with your stuffed animal, 
Start with the legs first and then do the body and the head and see where that takes you. Those are like the basic steps for creating a pattern. I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly how I go about crocheting. Pretty much like a workshop, if you, if you will. Let me bring it up. This person asked me to make their cute dog. Let me bring it up to the camera. Kind of looks like a gray lab. I'm going to work on the head in pretty much real time and show you exactly how I go about crocheting this. Let me take off my hamster. Now, typically I actually do double strands just because I like a thick, chunky plushie, but for now I'm just gonna single strand and I'm just gonna use a typical hook. Now, let's talk about that nose, right? As you can see, the nose of this lab if you take a closer look, it has like a trapezoid look, you know, kind of four-sided shape, if you will. So I'm gonna start off by making a magic ring, right? And I'm just gonna do, I'm honestly going to do eight in the magic ring. And I'll explain a little later why I'm doing eight instead of like the typical six. One, two, three, four. Wait, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. I'm doing eight because eight is easily divisible by four. Because I said this is a four-sided, I'm going to do three increases and one stitch at every other stitch to make sure that I can get a square shape overall. And I will show you what that looks like when I'm done with the pattern. I mean, with the round, this is what it ends up looking like. As you can see, it's giving square. Sorry, I realized that the lighting was really bad here, so I'm gonna bring you closer soon, don't worry. But with this square, I honestly think that this is a pretty good shape for a lab. And I don't want the nose to be any bigger, so I'm gonna keep crocheting in each stitch for a good hot minute, just to keep that size and check and also because I don't think I want the nose to be any bigger at that point I'm just gonna keep it looking like so so I'm gonna crochet in each stitch for it looks like quite a bit because as you notice the nose is already pretty long that's typical for dogs but you know what I mean so I'm gonna be crocheting in each stitch for quite a bit of rows because the nose is pretty long now, ooh, let me just bring a little bit into the field. Okay, this is what it ends up looking like. As you can see, it's very, it's already very square-y, which is really great. And this is what it looks like from this side. I'm gonna keep working towards the back like so. I'm just gonna keep crocheting in each stitch because if I'm being honest, I don't think there's a crazy change in the size of the dog's nose. Now, we, when we think about when to add increases and when to add decreases, I always say, like, instead of thinking of this shape as, like, just one big shape squished together, think of it as a whole bunch of circles just stacked on top of each other to create that shape. And then you'll understand which rounds you should do increases and decreases on, right? So, for example, these, if these are a whole bunch of circles, you would notice that those circles don't have a change in shape, which is the reason why I'm just single crocheting in each stitch. However, if there was a sudden change, which it looks like there will be soon, because these circles are bigger than these circles, then that's when we would have to start increasing. So I'm gonna crochet dog's head for a bit, and mind you, I'm gonna frog this entire thing because like I said, I usually double strand my work, but I'm just single stranding just because it's easier to see on the camera. So. Honestly, for now, I think I'm gonna stop there and it kind of looks like this. You can see it's looking pretty square. It doesn't seem like it's super square, but it honestly is pretty square. 
look at it from the side, I'd say that's pretty square. That looks pretty square to me, or as square as it needs to be. It's not gonna be super duper square, and that's fine. You understand that with stuffed animals, that's just not gonna happen. Now, for the sake of this video, because I don't want it to be too, too long, I've already like talked for 30 minutes, so let's not do that. I'm going to pretend that I crocheted the nose as long as I want to, which um, I eat. I did not. I would actually continue doing a couple more rounds of single crocheting because I feel like the nose should be a little bit longer. But for the sake of this video, we are going to pretend that I crocheted the nose as long as I wanted to do it. And I'm gonna move on to the head. So as you can see, the head shape, it is very, if you took this circle and you drew it out like we decided, and we know that our pinpoint is here, so we're working this way. We notice that the circle, our shape gets really big around this side, but kind of just stays the same over here. Really big here, but stays the same here. So I'm gonna add a lot of increases in one section just on the top of the nose. Let me show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna crochet for a bit, la di da di da. And then I'm going to make this the top of my nose, like this section, because as you can see, it's flat from like the square and stuff. So I'm going to increase in all of these stitches. I'm gonna increase in each stitch. I'm gonna actually bring my camera closer so that you can see exactly what I mean. I'm just gonna increase, but not just any old increase. I'm gonna increase in the front loop. Now, I'm only doing this in the front loop because if I did it in each stitch, it would just be like, you know, it would look pretty normal, more smooth, but I want it to look more exaggerated. I really want the nose to stick up. And you can see it's really sticking up if I do it in the front loops. Be aware of how front loops and back loops change the shape of your plushies as well because you could really do some great things sometimes by just crocheting in one loop versus the other. Okay, now I'm gonna keep going on. And the next round, I'm actually going to add even more increases amongst that area. Except this time, instead of doing an increase, I increase into one, two, three, four, five stitches. I'm gonna, instead, I want the increases just to be spread evenly across those five, those 10 stitches. So I'm just gonna increase single crochet, increase single crochet, increase single crochet, increase single crochet, increase single crochet. Just so that it continues to stay bigger around that area, but it also gives that area a nice round shape, you know? I don't want it to look too big. And I also don't want the stitches to be too clustered together because one tip I forgot to mention is that if you do a lot of increasing in one section, you're gonna end up with like a cluster, your stitches kind of clustering together like that which is great if you wanna make a scratchy, but not great if you wanna create a nice smooth side design, you know? That's not what we want when we're crocheting stuffed animals, but that's definitely what we want when we're crocheting like, I don't know, a pigtail. So now I'm done with that round and it looks something like this. As you can see, it's really exaggerated at the top. It's very flat at the bottom because we didn't do anything at the bottom stitches. We simply added our increases only at the top. And as you can see, I mean, I'll just make it a little square for you. That's our square looking lab. If you ask me, they look pretty similar. Now, at this point, I think I would add an increase because now, if you, you can't really tell from this photo, maybe there's another photo. Um, okay, well, I guess you can. From this photo, now sure, we added a lot of increases at the top. However, now the entire head has gone slightly a little more bigger. So on this round, I would actually evenly add increases around each stitch. So right now, I think I have like 24 stitches total. So now I think I would do increase single crochet three, six times for a total of 30 stitches. So that the stitches are evenly distributed across all of the head and not just a part of the head. 
because now it's not just the top that's getting bigger. It's the entire body that's getting bigger. But um, I'm going to quickly do that right now. Do, 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 do. Also, guys, funny thing. I literally realized I was filming right and I'm a noob when it comes to cameras and editing and stuff. Well, not, not to editing, but to cameras and stuff. And I literally realized that a part of the reason why my footage always looks like kind of like not the best is because I've been filming in HD. 30 frames per minute. Like, are you kidding? Even, I would never film in HD on my phone. And on my phone, I recently got a new phone. So I have the difference between filming in HD and filming in 8K. I don't know what that even means. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna lie to you. Anyway. So hopefully this looks way better than last week's video or Sunday's video. But anyway, so as you can see, I added an increase amongst each stitch. Now, as you can see, this work got a little bit wider. That's what we wanted on the top. And of course it got a little bigger here. Now at this point, I'm just gonna single crochet in each stitch for like an X amount of stitches until I feel like that is a good amount of stitches, I mean, around and that the head is wide enough and that I can finally start decreasing. In order to tell if you think that the body, the head is big enough, simply take your two fingers and just put them at the one edge of the diameter and the top edge and really just shape them with your hands like this. This is a pretty good indicator on how the head size is going to differ and change. So I would just crochet in each stitch around for like, I don't know, who knows how many stitches? Only exactly. Who knows how many stitches? I mean, how many rounds you're gonna crochet in? Exactly. You're only gonna know if you just keep crocheting the rounds. You keep crocheting and this is where the experiment part comes in. You just gotta have to keep crocheting round after round after round until you finally get to a point where you're like, I think the head size is exactly to my liking. Now I do want to add a quick side note, don't forget to take in the give of the yarn. Of course, all yarns have a certain percentage of give, as in like there's going to be a certain amount that they're going to stretch if you add like stuffing in or if you pull it or something like that. So when you're stuffing it, it may change the size by a significant amount or maybe by like not a significant amount at all. See, as you can see, I just finished, I almost finished one round and it's already coming out so cute. As you can see, it really does look like the photo. With that being said, guys, that is the end of the video. I didn't really have a whole bunch, bro, these leaves, uh, they're so cute. But honestly, sometimes I don't feel like living in a jungle. I wanted to make a quick video for you guys. I actually don't think this is going to be a quick video because uh, I've already filmed 50 minutes of content. I hope that this helped you to create your own plushies and stuffed animals because this is what I use all of the time. And I hope that my little tips and tricks helped as well because ultimately the world needs more creativity and if you have a design in your head and you want to bring it out, Please do. That's what we're all here striving for. We're just striving for a more creative, more beautiful world. If you have any questions on any of the things I was saying, let me know and I will help you to the best of my ability. But with that being said, y'all drink water or coffee. I'm I'm still I'm still on my my coffee. I haven't really taken a lot of sips, but take a nap ride a bike maybe and take care y'all i'm gonna see you soon bye also i cannot believe it but literally the other week i had 600 subscribers and now i have a thousand subscribers this is we have to we really i really have to thank you guys because that is so nice and i kind of want to crochet a plushie with exactly a thousand stitches one stitch 
for all of you guys. But that's going to be kind of complicated. And I'll let you know. Okay. Bye for real now. <laughs>